Hi, welcome to your channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. I'm your host, Dr. Ghosh, and I'm back today with another transformational and informational video for all of you. Friends, the inspirational person whose video I've bought for you today is about Don't Do Pant or otherwise known as Nana Saheb Peshwa 2. A Maratha Peshwa who played a very important role in the Indian freedom struggle. He led the Indian contingent in the rebellion of 1857 and managed to recapture Kanpur or Kanpur as it was known as from the British contingent, the East India Company and he ruled over Kanpur for a few days. The British tried very hard to recapture him after they had regained Kanpur but they were never successful. There are various rumors about the death of Nana Saheb but he was never recaptured by the British. A Peshwa of the Maratha Empire who regained Kanpur for India is remembered as a freedom fighter and one of the few freedom fighters who were never recaptured by the British. A totally inspirational story of courage and bravery. I'll be sharing with you more about him subsequently in the video. But before that, I wanted to share with you a brief about the channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. I started this channel two years back. Today, we have got 340 plus videos already uploaded on the channel. We have got 984 subscribers and request your support in hitting the magic figure of 1000 subscribers. And we have got over 28,000 views on the channel. My mission is to ensure and transform the thinking of the present and coming generations so that they live by the eternal human principles such as loyalty, integrity, honesty, respect for diversity, respect for womanhood, respect for our elders. Living by the eternal human principles is the only way forward for a conflict-ridden mankind and living by these principles is the only way to success in life. Therefore, please subscribe to our channel Generous, Gracious and Gallant and also share these videos and encourage others to become a part of our journey of transformationist. I wish to thank all my 984 subscribers. Now coming to the video, like I said, today I'm talking about Don't Do Pant or otherwise known as Nana Saheb Peshwa II who recaptured Kanpur for the Indian freedom fighters and was one of the few freedom fighters who was never captured, recaptured by the British and he probably died in exile. Now, he was born as Dondu Pant, like I said, on May 19, 1824 in the Holkar state, modern day Nasik in Maharashtra. He was born to Narayan Bhatt and Gangabai. After the defeat of the Marathas, the British East India Company had exiled the Peshwa Baji Rao II to Bithur near Kanpur and paid him an annual pension of 80,000 pounds. Dondupan or Nana Sahib Peshwa's father Narayan Bhatt was a well-educated Brahman and travelled from the Western Ghats to Bitur to serve the Peshwa as a court official. The Peshwa Baji Rao II had no male heirs and therefore Peshwa Baji Rao II adopted Nana Sahib and his younger brother 
and made them his heirs in 1827 nana sahib's childhood friends too joined in the royal court in bithur they were tatya tope who later became his general and was part of the 1857 rebellion and one of the legendary fighters of the 1857 rebellion fight for india's freedom he was also joined by azimullah khan who became his secretary and diwan and also had a important role to play in the negotiation with the east india company to restore kanpur to nana sahib he was also joined by manikant nishka tambe who later became renowned as the rani of jhansi or rani lakshmi bai and other famous legendary freedom fighter of the 1857 rebellion against east india company and the british forces we have to understand that under the doctrine of lapse which was made by lord delawsi the governor general of india from british from 1848 to 1856 that any ruler could be declared incompetent or any ruler who died without a heir lord delawsi ensured that these princely sto- kingdoms were annexed by the british and became part of british east india company nana sahib was the legal adopted heir of the maratha peshwa and he expected the continuance of the annual pension of 80000 pounds from east india company but after the death of his father baji rao too this was denied by the east india company nana sahib peshwa felt very offended that his pension titles and grants were withdrawn he sent his diwan and childhood friend azimullah khan to england in 1853 to negotiate with the british court but azimullah khan failed and returned to the court in 1855 under the doctrine of lapse lord dalhousie ensured that they took over the princely states of satara in 1848 jaipur and sambalpur in 1849 baghat in 1850 najpur in 1853 jhansi in 1854 and awadh in 1856 total revenue because of the doctrine of lapse being implemented on these states was 4 million pounds sterling to the coffers of the east india company when disheartened by the british the revolt started in 1857 nana sahib falsely took into confidence the british collector of kanpur charles hillers dun and assured him that he will give him 1500 soldiers to support the british if the revolt spread to kanpur on 6 june 1857 the british contingent when for faced by the rebellion forces of indian independence took refuge in a entrenchment in the northern part of kanpur Nana Sahib and forces entered the British magazine the ammunition dump the soldiers of the 53rd native infantry thought Nana Sahib was joining them to protect the British entrenchment but once inside Nana Sahib declared himself as part of the rebellion forces and said that he was under the command of Bahadur Shah II the Mughal emperor in Delhi who was the head of the rebellion forces and was appointed as the head by the rebellion indian forces he took possession of the treasury also of the britishers and marched up the grand tak road and met up the revolting soldiers at kalyanpur 
He convinced them and led them back to Kanpur to take over Kanpur. On 5th June 1857, Nana Sahib sent a letter to General Wheeler at Kanpur saying that he'll be attacking on 6th June at 10.30 and he did so. For three weeks, the British contingent under General Wheeler held out. They had little water and food and many lives were lost to hunger and disease. General Wheeler was under the added pressure that his son, Lieutenant Gordon, had also died in the battle for Kanpur. To end the gridlock which, of the battle which had gone on for over three weeks, Nana Sahib sent a female woman prisoner, Rose Greenway, to General Wheeler and assured them of safe passage. But on 24th June, the reply received was no, as it did not have Nana Sahib's original seal. On 25th June, Nana Sahib sent another note signed with his original seal saying that he will let the British contingent, women and children, give them safe passage to Allahabad if General Wheeler surrendered. General Wheeler agreed to this safe passage for women and children and his forces on 27 June 1857. On 25th June 1857, General Wheeler with 300 women, children and forces set out to Sati Chawa Ghat at 8 a.m. Nana had arranged their 40 boats for their support to move to Allahabad. What happened next is controversial, whether it was a few native forces who were disgruntled with death of the many of their fellow soldiers or whether it was the Britishers who fired first, we do not know. But firing started and it is said that many died in this firing from both sides, from the British contingent side as well as from the rebellious Indian forces. However, General Wheeler and his men were captured, recaptured and 120 women and children were captured and escorted to Savada House where it was the headquarters of Nana. General Wheeler and her officers were given a chance as requested by Chaplain Mancreef to pray and then they were executed by the local army of Nana Sahib. At this instant, the women and children were not executed. It was only General Wheeler and his officers who were executed. The women were kept under the safety of a tabayef, a notch gun, Husseini Khanun or Husseini Begum. She kept them and fed them. Later, about thousand British officers, 150 Sikh and 30 cavalry officers under the command of General Henry Havelock proceeded to work Kanpur to retake Kanpur and Lucknow. They were joined this main force by Major Renaud and James Neal. They joined and advanced together towards Nana's armies. There was a battle at Fatehpur on 12th July where Nana's armies were defeated. Another force was sent by Nana Sahib under the command of his younger brother Bala Rao. This force too was defeated on 15 July in the battle of Along. On 16 July 1857, the forces reached Kanpur. Nana Sahib retreated to Bithor. On 19 July, Bithor too was captured by the British. Nana Sahib dis disappeared 
and despite many attempts by the British to recapture him. In fact, the 7 Bengal infantry came very close to capturing Nana Sahib, but they could recover only his silver sword. This sword was later auctioned by the British. And today there is no trace of this sword. Tatya Tope, the general of Nana Sahib, continued to fight the Britishers. And after the, de the defeat at Kanpur and Lucknow, Rani Lakshmi by Tatya Tope went on to Gwalior and in June 1858, Tatya Tope and Rani Lakshmi Bai both declared Nana Sahib as the Peshwa from Gwalior in 1858. There was no trace of Nana Sahib, mind you, he had disappeared. There were multiple rumors. They said that at Nepal, he was under the protection of Sir Jang Bahadur Rana, the PM of Nepal. It is true that the women folk of Nana Sahib's household were there in Nepal. It is rumored that he died in a tiger attack on 24th September 1859, but this is doubtful. Many of the followers of Nana Sahib disguised themselves and surrendered to the Britishers, claiming to be Nana Sahib, but none of these could be confirmed. It is said he was spotted in Istanbul. There is another rumor which has some amount of credibility that he lived as an ascetic Yoginder Dayanand Maharaj till 1903 in Sitor in Gujarat. There are some of his items are still in display in Sitor. Many of his followers, like I said, declared themselves to be Nana Sahib and surrendered to the Britishers to protect Nana Sahib. The Britishers could never recapture Nana Sahib. There is another strong rumor that Nana Sahib lived in Sitapur in UP till 1906 in the forest protected by his Guru. Post-India independence in 1947, he was hailed as a freedom fighter and hailed for his coverage and bravery along with Tatya Tope, his general and Rani Lakshmi Bai, who was his childhood friend. Friends, Nana Sahib Peshwa to a courageous Peshwa, brave Maratha warrior, a freedom fighter who regained Kanpur from the British during the revolt of 1857 and was never captured unlike many other freedom fighters. He is going down in history as one of the few freedom fighters, Rajas, Peshwa, who recaptured a part of India, especially Kanpur during the rebellion of 1857 for the Indian forces. He is also one of the few Rajas Maharajas, royalty of India, who were never recaptured by the British forces. He went down in history as one of the bravest freedom fighters of India. Friends, I am sure you like these inspirational, motivational tales of inspirational men and women which I share with you on your favorite channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. Please share these videos like these videos and subscribe to the channel. I will be back soon with another very inspirational video on your favorite channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. Till we meet again, good luck, all the best.